Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today's video will be geared towards new people that are looking to invest money in the cryptocurrency asset class for the first time. However, I think the principles from this video will be useful for everyone. We're gonna be talking about modern portfolio theory and maximizing your sharp ratio, which exists on the efficient frontier. If you guys like the content, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. Also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. So if you're new to the space and you're looking to get into the cryptocurrency markets, one of the common questions is where do you start, right? Where do you start in this madness that seem you know the seemingly madness of of crypto how do you start investing in this asset class it's easy to to want to go chase whatever altcoin is being shilled by your favorite youtuber on that day however a lot of random micro cap altcoins will not stand the test of time so if you are speculating on them and they do well you may consider taking profits to some of the larger cryptocurrencies and those are the main ones we talk about on this channel okay so let's suppose that you have a thousand dollars to invest in crypto where should you put it well a lot of people will make these posts say rate my portfolio and all this and then someone will give them their their unfiltered opinion on why it's awful probably because it doesn't include the altcoin of choice that they are hoping to to see go up a thousand x but what we're going to do in this video is we're just going to be looking at fairly simplistic modern portfolio theory we're going to be maximizing our sharp ratio on the efficient frontier okay so if you have a thousand dollars where do you put it well the first thing I should say is this is not financial advice. None of this is Ben's opinion. It's strictly based on historical price volatility and historical returns. Nothing more, nothing less. That's what the Sharpe ratio is built on. So you might look at this chart and not know what it means. It's the expected return versus volatility. So 1.0 represents an expected return of 100%. Okay, now you might say, oh, Hundred, uh, an expected return of 100%, sign me up. Well, the volatility on, say, a portfolio with an expected return in one year of 100% also has a volatility of around 65%, meaning that to within one standard deviation, there's a, there's a decent probability. So basically within one standard deviation, your, your expected return would be 100%, plus or minus 65%, meaning it would range from 35% up to 165%. Now, that's within one standard deviation. Obviously, there's certain probabilities that could make you lose money. But this is why cryptocurrency is the focus of this channel, because it offers such attractive risk-adjusted returns. Yes, there will be a year here and there that don't perform that well, What's a couple years among friends, right? But for the most part, as long as you're, you know, you're staying the course, it's hard to go wrong as long as you just stay disciplined and you keep at it. So let's try to break this down. But before we do, we have to go back to the basics, okay? So this is the efficient frontier. And it really stops right here. You could argue this part down here is the inefficient frontier. You might say, well, what the hell does that mean? What, what is the efficient frontier? The idea is that for a given set of, of cryptocurrencies, there exists a single portfolio which maximizes your risk-adjusted returns. A single portfolio which maximizes your risk-adjusted returns. So, for instance, for a given level of volatility, let's suppose you're okay with 80% volatility and you want an expected return up here of 115%, 110%, or so let's say 112%. You're, you're okay going with a volatility of 80% rather than say 65% because you want to get a higher return. There is a portfolio that consists of Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin that would exist on this efficient frontier. Now, only one. The rest would come up, you know, each of these little, I mean, it's hard to see all these little dots, but each point is a single portfolio. This is 100,000 portfolios. This is a Monte, Carlo, a Monte Carlo stimulation. However, with simple quadratic programming, you can identically solve for the efficient frontier or, or for the sharp ratio that basically, so the one that maximizes your risk adjusted return. So you can solve for it using quadratic programming. You can also do it brute force Monte Carlo to get an idea as well. But... There are certain portfolios that exist up here. 
that would theoretically give you a higher return for the same level of risk or volatility? Why would you want to get a portfolio that that is get, that would say give you an expected return of 70% for the same level of volatility as a portfolio that could give you 110% for the same level of volatility? This is why managing your risk is so important in the market. Now, I say this is a Bitcoin, Ethereum, and Litecoin. You might be wondering why I'm including Litecoin. Well, I'm doing it to actually show that based on a lot of portfolios and maximizing your efficient, your, your risk-adjusted returns, holding Litecoin doesn't really make a whole lot of sense. Okay, um, you know, if you're if you're a Litecoin enthusiast, again, uh, you know, don't take it up with me. Don't get mad at me. If you if you want to complain about it in the comments, it's fine. But I can be your outlet. But take it up with the data. Take it up with the historical data because all this is is taking up taking into account the historical data. It's based on the his, it's the expected return and expected volatility based on historical returns and historical volatility. So this is the maximum Sharpe ratio. So for those people who want to maximize their risk adjusted returns, they want this portfolio, okay? Because it, it maximizes their risk adjusted returns. So for every unit of risk, they're squeezing out as much theoretical return as possible. And so basically between this white line and this white line, this would be known as your efficient frontier. You might say, well, why wouldn't you want this portfolio? This one looks to be the best. Well, you might argue that you could take on more risk if, you, if you're less risk averse and you wanna take on more risk. You could come up the efficient frontier and say go for a portfolio with an expected return of 120% annually but you're going to see more volatility, okay? And as long as you can stomach that volatility, then it's okay. Also recognize though that within one standard deviation, the portfolio that max that maximizes on this on this uh, or maximizes the sharp ratio up here would be about 120 percent plus or minus 100 percent. So it can go pretty far down within one standard deviation. Now, let's get to something a little bit more concrete so you guys understand what the sharp ratio is. Essentially, the sharp ratio is just your 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 rate of return, RP, minus your risk-free rate. So basically treasury yields. You, you subtract out what you could get uh, based on, let's say, your risk-free rate. And then you divide it by the standard deviation of the portfolio's excess return. Not the return, the excess return, which is basically how much more return could it give you over, say, the risk-free rate. So some people probably think I'm, I'm somewhat delusional and I'm, I'm talking about risk in this very convoluted way, but there is a method to the madness and we can start to quantify it, which I think will be useful to people that are wanting to invest in the market. Now, suppose that you have a portfolio that just consists of Bitcoin and Ethereum. Rather than getting a nice filled in curve like we saw before, because you just have two uh, assets, you just get a single line because you just have, a, you know, you just have an X and a Y coordinate basically on, on each portfolio and it just comes out to be a single line. So the portfolio which maximizes your Sharpe ratio based on just Bitcoin and Ethereum based on historical volatility since 2015 is 76% Bitcoin. 24% Ethereum. So essentially 76% Bitcoin, 24% Ethereum would maximize your Sharpe ratio. Uh, you might say, well, that seems like very little Ethereum. What, I want more Ethereum. Well, again, we're not saying that, that you can't have more Ethereum. We're just saying that for every unit of risk you take on, 76% Bitcoin, 24% Ethereum right now maximizes your risk adjusted returns. Now, if you include Litecoin in the mix, it still stays the same. 76% Bitcoin, 24% Ethereum. So the funny thing about that is no matter, despite the fact that including Litecoin, you know, theoretically, you're, you're reducing your idiosyncratic risk because every asset that you own has some idiosyncratic risk. By having an index of assets, you, you, you cancel out the idiosyncratic risk and you just get your market risk. But actually adding Litecoin reduces your risk adjusted returns because there's a lot of downside and the potential upside is not justified. Again, if that offends you, I would recommend pulling up a Litecoin Bitcoin chart and a Litecoin Ethereum chart. They both just, Litecoin tends to bleed against both of them over the macro scale. So the idea is not to say that Litecoin cannot go up. I do think in fact that Litecoin will appreciate in value. My point is that for every dollar you're putting in Litecoin, 
you're not putting it in Ethereum, you're not putting it in Bitcoin, okay? Now, let's talk about something a little bit more useful. If you had a thousand dollars, how would you divvy it up, right? How would you divvy it up? Well, it depends on what your risk tolerance is and how much how much volatility you're willing to take on. If you wanted to just say, um, uh, be here, uh, and, and by the way, these, these numbers up here are for some other calculation that I ran that I ended up not presenting and I just forgot to delete it. But if, you, if you're running this and you say, you know what, I wanna be a little bit more risky rather than be 76% Bitcoin, 24% Ethereum, I wanna have a volatility of 70% instead of 65. Where would that put you? Well, that would put you at 54% Bitcoin, 45% Ethereum, and 0.81% Litecoin. So in the portfolio that maximizes the Sharpe ratio at 70% volatility, it comes up to be about 1% Litecoin. For 75% volatility, so you're coming up the curve, you're hoping to squeeze out more return because you're coming up the curve this way, which is higher up on the expected return, you're getting less and less percentage of Bitcoin, 44.8 versus 55.1. So in this portfolio, you have a little bit more Ethereum than, than Bitcoin. And as you continue to navigate up the efficient frontier at higher and higher volatility levels, you're essentially looking at, in order to increase your expected return on a yearly basis, you would have to ultimately have less and less Bitcoin and more and more Ethereum. And the reason is because Ethereum tends to outperform Bitcoin, but it doesn't outperform it always. I mean, this is a, a great example. In February, Bitcoin is up about 76%, whereas Ethereum is up only like a modest 52% or so. So, you know, there are situations where it is better to hold Bitcoin, but if you're just holding for years and years and years, and you want to maximize your potential profits, and you're okay living through a lot of that extra volatility that you would get by holding Ethereum, then the more the higher you go up this curve meaning the higher theoretical return based on historical returns and historical volatility the less bitcoin you're going to have the more ethereum you're going to have if you want to be more risk averse and you don't want you don't want to be too much exposed to the potential downside of ethereum and you want the relative safety of bitcoin then over here at 76 percent bitcoin 24 percent ethereum will get you there so the first thing or one of the last things i should say about this is Every portfolio, you know, the per each person's perfect for portfolio will depend on their own risk tolerance, okay? It will depend on how risky they want to be and no one can tell you how risky you should be. It will depend on your own individual circumstances. I've tried to present the data here to show you that the, the higher theoretical return that you want, you're going to pay for it with more units of risk. So there's more downside risk the higher up you go. And you can see that here. I mean, the higher percentage up you go in Ethereum, the less you're going to own a Bitcoin. And whenever there is a correction, Ethereum will bleed more than Bitcoin. So you're going to be exposed to that downside volatility. If you want to minimize the downside volatility, then having more Bitcoin than Ethereum would help you accomplish that. For every theoretical return that you get, you've paid for it in units of risk. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Now, you might be wondering, why did I pick out Litecoin? Well, it's nice to have three coins here that we have data that goes back several years because you have to, you, you, each data set has to be the same length. We can't use data for Bitcoin that goes back to 2010 and then data for Ethereum that goes back to 2015. So the data that we've used to, to show these results is data from 2015, from, from August of 2015 until the present day, okay? So it fully encompasses a lot of the various price movements we've seen over the years. If we were to rerun this calculation in a few months, the results could be slightly different. If you want to follow something like this and you start to, start to see your portfolio become unbalanced at times or get off to some level that you're not comfortable with, imagine imagine Ethereum goes up 2x or something and then your Ethereum percentage gets to an uncomfortable amount. You don't necessarily have to sell it if you don't want to incur a taxable event. You could sell it, of course. Another idea is if you're DCAing into the market, you could just focus on DCAing into the coin that will help get you to the percentage of that coin that you want to be in your portfolio. So if you're putting $1,000 into crypto the first, at these levels, which I mean are fairly risky levels, I'm not going to lie, I've been saying that for a long time, but they are fairly risky. Uh, but again, those people that are new don't necessarily want to miss out. And you could even argue that putting money in even if they were to lose it all, it might be a, a learning opportunity. A lot of people kind of go through that that phase before they before they really start to understand how crypto works. 
if you put a thousand dollars in and you're completely new to the space to some degree you have to completely write off that thousand dollars and assume you'll never see it again okay there's a decent chance it'll grow in value but you know you should not be investing more than you can afford to lose that's what everyone will tell you and i will agree with that don't invest more than you can afford to lose because if it goes down 80 percent you don't you know you need to be able to live through that and be okay a lot of people lived through corrections in the past and now as long as they weren't investing in random garbage altcoins they should be doing fairly well so what i would first say is if you're putting a thousand dollars into the market I would start valuing valuing my portfolio in Bitcoin. So you put a thousand dollars in. How much Bitcoin? What is your what is your Bitcoin valuation worth? Okay, focus on that. Forget about the USD valuation because it's going to be very volatile, super volatile, especially with the market as volatile as it is, as it is right now. Focus on the percentage or the the amount of Bitcoin you own in terms of how much actual Bitcoin do you own and what is the Bitcoin valuation worth of the Ethereum that you own if in fact you're buying Bitcoin and Ethereum and then try to make sure you you, you know you watch those values you, you watch them change over the months and over the years and you'll get a better idea the longer you're in crypto the more you'll appreciate having a majority of your portfolio in crypt in, in Bitcoin the shorter amount of time you're in crypto the, the higher likelihood you'll you'll appreciate having more of your portfolio in other altcoins okay um, and so I think the, 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 the people who have been here the longest, you know, they'll, they'll probably have some small positions in some random altcoins that we're not talking about, but they probably have the majority of their portfolio in Bitcoin and Ethereum because they simply don't want to deal with a lot of the downside risk to a lot of altcoins because they've been burned so many times. With that said, they probably there's a decent chance they have smaller positions in some of the altcoins as I do. We talk about Link, Ada, and Dot a lot on the channel. I obviously have decent positions in all those, uh, but at the end of the day, Bitcoin and Ethereum, I try to keep those two the highest percentages. Bitcoin first, Ethereum second, and the other ones kind of bringing up bringing up the 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 last bits of the entire portfolio. So hopefully this makes sense. I know this isn't your traditional, you know portfolio assessment video but i do try to present things in a slightly different way we stick to the data not to my opinion the data this is what the data suggests if you don't like it don't take it up with me take it up with the data if you guys like the content make sure you subscribe to the channel definitely subscribe give the video a thumbs up we have the premium list you can find a link to that in the description below if you want access to exclusive content you'll get access to weekly premium videos weekly reports the risk dashboard the telegram alerts channel the trading view indicators the telegram chat room and more make sure you guys lock in the lower rate if you're curious why i only chose these three coins it's again because of the data uh historical limitations however we do have premium videos that go more into this and look at other coins uh, that have you know that don't, don't have as much data but then again it's not as useful and we'll probably have more of this on the premium list in the coming weeks at the very least subscribe to the channel give the video a thumbs up thank you guys for tuning in and i'll see you next time bye